Hey guys, it's Vivs here from Design Coder. In this video, let's try to convert what we have in the left hand side to our real simulator here on the right hand side. If you go back to the main.storyboard file, we have this box here which is called the view controller by the way. If you go to the bottom left here, there is this icon called the document outline. If you click on that option, you notice immediately that something pops up here in the form of a tree view. The view controller scene, as they call it, is the current screen that the user is looking at, inside which the view controller is basically the object that is responsible for managing the screen. Inside that, you have something called the view right here. If you click on that, you will notice immediately that this entire area here gets highlighted. And this view is basically an object which is a rectangular area on the screen that the person can see and interact with. Let's try to change the background color of this view. To do that, you're going to select that first, which we have currently done, and you're going to go on the right hand side over here. There are several tabs, and out of that, we are interested in the fourth one, which is called the Attributes Inspector. Let's select that, and you will immediately notice there is an option here called Background for the current view that has been selected. Let's expand that option and select Other from that. Immediately, you will see this color pop up dialog here with a lot of options. Let's try to see what it has in detail. The first one here is going to let you pick up a color from this circle. Second one is going to let you choose sliders from where you can say grayscale or RGB or whatever you want. In our case, we need an RGB slider. So let's select that. The hex color would be 252525 in our case. So just hit return at this point and you will immediately notice that our view has been colored. Immediately, you notice that the complete screen in the main.storyboard has turned dark gray. Let's verify this by running this on our iPhone 6 simulator. Now when you run the app, you notice that the complete area has turned into exactly what the main.storyboard shows here. And that was our first step in matching our design preview. The next step would be to add this UI image into our screen. But before doing that, let's try to add this label because we need to position it at the center of the screen. So let's try to add the static text 00 here at the center of the screen. To do that, we are going to need a widget called the UI label. Let's go at the bottom right hand corner here where we can find it easily from the third tab, which would be the object library. So once you click show the object library right here, you can type label and there you go. It says a variably sized amount of static text. Let's just drag it into our layout. You notice as I start dragging stuff, I get these blue guidelines indicating where I can leave it. So there you go. That would be the center of the screen. I'm going to leave it right there and I'm just going to double click it and enter 00. 0, 0 out there and hit return once again we gotta center this just to make sure i have centered it once again now the color is white that's pretty good however we need to change the font size to match what we have in our design so first let's select the label and go on the right hand side top here where we can customize the properties of that label the fourth tab the attributes inspector is where you can do that immediately you notice the section here called label where you can change the color of the label in the second option that says color. In our case, we need to change the font size, which would be the third option here called font. Let's select this text button over there. And there we have the size. It says 17 currently. Let's change that to 128 and click done here. Going back, you won't see anything in our label right now. And that is because the text has increased. We need to make sure that the size of the label now matches the size of the text. You can drag and drop it to make it look bigger, but we can do that in a shorter way as well. Let me show you how. Select this label here. Go to the top where you see this option called editor. Select that and have this option which says size to fit content. When you click on this option, you will immediately notice that our label now becomes pretty big. In fact, it is as big as the size of the text inside it. Once again, let's center the label by dragging it. So as I start dragging, once again, you will notice those blue guidelines that appear horizontally and vertically. And that's exactly where we want to leave the label. Let's leave it right there and see how it looks when we run it. When you run the app on the simulator, it looks completely different from what it did here in the main.storyboard file. And that is because of where it is positioned on the screen. Let's take a look at that. You select this label here once again, and you go to the right hand side where we have this fifth tab here called the size inspector when you open the tab you notice that there is something about x y width and height 
x it says is 128 and y it says is 223. If you take a look at the output in our simulator, this is the same thing which you would notice. There is 128 from the left and 223 or 228 from the top. We have nowhere told our simulator that it should be at the center of the screen with respect to whatever size the simulator is running on. And this cannot be done because different devices have different screen sizes. You want to specify in other words that the label should be horizontally centered and vertically centered by using the right values depending on which device that app is running on. To do so, we are going to need something called an auto layout. What you see on the emulator currently is what happens without auto layout. Now let me show you what happens with it. Select the label and go at the top to the editor option out here. And in the editor, go to resolve auto layout issues and select this first option that says add missing constraints. When you do that, immediately you notice these two blue guidelines appear indicating that the label will now be centered horizontally and vertically regardless of how big the screen size turns out to be. So on the right hand side, if you go to our size inspector, you notice that we have two constraints added here. One that says align center X to super view and the other that says align center Y to super view. Let's try running this on our simulator now and see the difference. So there's the app running on the simulator now and look at that. This time it's perfectly centered horizontally and vertically and that is because we use the auto layout. Auto layout in our case is a simple way of saying find the width and height of this device and place this label at the center with respect to that particular device. Now if you run this on any other device like the iPhone 4s or 5s you will still see that the label is centered. Comparing our simulator with our design preview this is what we currently have. The text color needs to change. So let's do that. Let's go back to the main.storyboard file, select the label, go to the right hand side where we have the fourth tab which would be the attributes inspector. Out of this tab, you'll notice that there is this option that says color right here. Let's select that option, click other. You will be presented with a dialog that lets you choose colors. Same way we did earlier. Let's find out what color we need. So the color to add here would be 6161 and 61. Let's hit return on our keyboard and there you go. There's our color that has changed exactly to what we want in the design. If you compare our design preview and what we have in the simulator, you notice immediately that the font is different. To add a custom font that is the Source Sans Pro Lite, which our design preview is currently using, we need to do that in code. For now, we can at least make this look better by going here in the right hand side and changing its style to light. Let's select the font option in the text pad here and from the style, we can make it thin hit done and now when you run the app you see something that looks better than what we had but this still isn't the actual font being used in the design preview and we will change that in code when we get to code in the further videos next let's try to display this image of the clock to do that we are going to need a widget called the image view let's go here at the bottom right corner where we have the list of widgets in the object library which is the third tab and type image view over there so there you go there's an image view that says displays a single image or an animation described. Now in our case, we just need a single image. So let's drag and drop this right above the label. So when I'm dragging it, you notice that once again, we get those blue guidelines and we want it right above the label over there. So I'm just going to release the mouse over there and there's our image view. Once again, we can add the auto layout constraints in the same way to the image view by going at the top to the editor, resolve auto layout issues and add missing constraints. When we do this, let's try to take a look at what constraints have been added. By selecting the image view here, going on the right hand side, opening the size inspector which happens to be the fifth tab and then notice the constraints over here. It says the width is something which we don't need because the image is going to change, right? So there is a constraint to the top space, that is a top layout, there's an aligned center X and there's a bottom space over here. In simple words, the four constraints that are out here indicate four different things. The first one width says that the width is 240 points. We will discuss what a point is in the next video. The second constraint here says top space to top layout. As you'll notice is the amount of space from the top here all the way to the image view which is 67 which is the highlighted part out there. The third one says align the center of this image view with the center of the UI label 00. And the fourth one is saying the bottom space between the 00 text label and the image view is zero points which means they are stuck together. Currently we just see a rectangular area on the screen in the name of an image view. However we have not added any image to it which would be the clock image in our case. If you run the app on our simulator you won't see this image view. It is shown here in the main.storyboard file 
just for illustration purposes. The next step would be to actually add an image to the image view, but we will do that in the next video because that involves a lot of talk and discussion. So let's wrap up with adding this toggle button at the bottom that displays the on off switch again. So to do that, go to the object library at the bottom right here and simply search for a button in the search box. So there's our button. You can just drag and drop it somewhere on the screen. Let's say right here along the center. Once again, we got to ensure that the button follows the constraints of auto layout, which would mean it should be centered horizontally regardless of which device this app is running on. So to do that, again, select it, go to the editor, resolve auto layout issues and add a missing constraints. When we do that, on the right hand side, you can notice some constraints have been added. For starters, it says the top space to the label 00 is 40 points and the center X is aligned with the center of 00 label that we have. So that those are the two constraints which we may have to edit later depending on how we add the images out there. So this would be our button which displays a text right now. We don't need text, rather we need the image that says on and off. So right now, if you run the app, you would see the same thing. The label, the image view won't be shown because there is no image to display, but the button is going to be seen here with its text. We need to add the image to the button and the image view, which we are going to do in the next video. In the meantime, stay tuned with Design Coder. All the videos covering the design, the Android part and the iOS development are right here on designcoder.io. So be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited, unrestricted access to all the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.